Hey, sister friends, it's Terry from Sisterhood of the Traveling Brush. Thanks so much for joining me today here on my channel. If you're not subscribed yet, make sure and do so and hit the little notification bell. Today is a lot of fun. We are have a dupe challenge. It was uh, hosted by Clara Baker of No Can Do. I'll be on the playlist over there with 20 other uh furniture painters and flippers who are doing similar projects. This was mine. Our goal was to find a high-end piece of furniture and duplicate it on something that costs less. So I love the one that I found. I'll show you here in the, in the video of what my inspiration piece was. And thank you to whoever was the original creator of that one. I don't know who the original artist was of that. And many thanks you'll see in the video. My husband helped me on a couple of uh, projects here. We took the legs off of this piece and replaced them with some mid-century modern legs. And thanks to my granddaughters, these are actual um, wood fishing bobbers that we made the hardware out of, and my granddaughters helped me paint those. Eric helped me again with the sanding on those. My daughter Candy uh, drew and procreate the fish that we have here to create the stencils. And I hope you enjoy the whole process as much as I did, and watch the other videos too, and I hope you're inspired to create something really cool and share it with me down down below or well let me know below what you've decided to create where you're watching from and if you've ever done a, a dupe piece i'll see you in in the end i'll come back and say bye we are all about the good the good times dancing till it feels on I chose to go with Silk All-in-One Paint in Mojave from the Desert Collection, and this is my inspiration piece. It is actually etched in there, or that's what it appears like in this. That's from Anthropology, and I love it. Let's have a drink, just relax, all your problems will fade if you're ready for to get started on the piece, I removed all of the old hardware. It was screwed in in all kinds of crazy ways. And then I used Dixie Bell White Lightning to clean and deglaze the piece. I did find that it had a little bit of a stench afterward and there had been some bug residue, I guess is a good way to put it. So I decided to use Dixie Bell Boss to block out the stains and odors on this piece as well. I used it in clear. And I'm going to paint the inside of the drawers as well, just to keep them sanitary. I always make sure to use uh, some clean water and a sponge to rinse uh, any residue from the white lightning off and then dry the piece to make sure that it will adhere good and not leave any kind of residue under there. I did scuff sand the entire piece. I scuffed across the top. That's always a, a smart idea when you're using the silk all-in-one paint and also anything that has a little bit of a glossy surface. And where the hardware was on here, uh, it was a little bit rough there, like maybe somebody had put polyurethane after the hardware was there or something like that. So I made sure and do a little extra sanding there. And when I'm going over it with the boss later to block any bleed through that may happen because this was a little bit of a darker piece, I put two coats there where I sanded a lot near the hardware. If you're ready for a good time, count on me. There's a 
Silk does have a built-in stain blocker that blocks the bleed through, so that wasn't 100% necessary, but I really was worried about this piece and I didn't want a chance to having to come back later and add more boss and then add more paint so uh, while I had the boss out I just threw the extra on there anyway in my opinion it never hurts to be too cautious Once again, I didn't have to boss these insides because I am going to paint the insides and the sides of the drawers with the um, silk all-in-one umber that has that built in, but they smelled a little bit like a cigarette and I just wanted to do the extra so that you can skip that stuff if you want to, but while I had it out, I just decided to go ahead and put it on there. I want the end user to be very happy uh, with their piece. The silk all-in-one paints used a little bit differently than the chalk mineral paint and you always want to use a synthetic brush with that. I'm using the Dixie Belle Flat Large and you want to try to start on one end and go to the other and not overwork it. Put plenty of paint on the brush enough to get from one end to the other if you possibly can it's not like with the other paints where you would want to mist it or anything like that maybe if you were in a really dry climate but i'm not i'm in louisiana it's it's very humid so there's no need to add any water or any misting or anything to the silk paint it works best when you put a good coat of paint on your brush and go from one end to the other. I still am going in because this has a pretty good wood grain in it and going back and forth a little bit to work it in but then I come back over from one end to the other to smooth out my brush strokes and it is self-leveling so it will end up with smooth brush strokes in the end as long as I hurry and don't overwork it. best friend didn't care about the rules good on the weekends i'll be in fools drift in the deep space so brave and so stupid just like the movies how it's gonna stay in the fight with you just thinking we would do this until we couldn't do it each and every high every night with you you and me so clueless I put on two good coats of the Mojave and got fantastic coverage from that. And that was really all I needed for my base.
after I found my inspiration piece online, I decided I would go looking to find a piece to create it with. I live in a rural area of Louisiana and there's not a whole lot of places to choose from and there weren't a whole lot of pieces in the places that I found. This first one actually is one that I was considering until I, I found the one that I ended up with, but there were a lot of places, some are open only certain days, some were not open when I was there, some had, you know, just inappropriate pieces, and I actually ended up having to uh, take a trip to Lake Charles, Louisiana, which is about a little over an hour from where I live before I was able to find the piece that I wanted, and once I saw it, I knew that was the one. I loved it. At one point, I was thinking I may have to dig through my stash that I keep hidden in my husband's workshop to see if I could find a piece. And eh, I didn't have anything there either. Eric stuck it in the back seat of the truck for me while I went inside and paid and then we needed to get the measurements on the drawers to send to Candy so that she could cut out the stencil and the correct size for how I wanted to finish it. It was awesome how she could um, take the picture and go to procreate and trace that out and create the just the perfect size of stencil. She used her silhouette and just stencil making material for that. In order to get a look similar to the dupe piece that I chose, we needed to take these wooden legs off and install the metal mid-century modern legs that I got off of Amazon. There was a little bit of an issue, and I'm gonna go ahead and show you the whole process here. The way we do this in the beginning, adding the two strips of wood on each side underneath, those are called cleats. That's the way that you normally would do this. That's why I left it in there. However, this piece was racked a little bit. It wasn't square. After we got all of that installed and got it on here, or got it on there, it still didn't stand up straight. So we took measurements on each side and it turned out one side was a, about an eighth of an inch longer than the other, so it was a little bit crooked. And we took those back out and put a three quarter inch, I believe it was a three quarter inch, maybe it was a five eighths piece of plywood in the bottom to square it up and make it a little more solid. And then we attached the legs to that.
I wanted to do something really fun for the hardware, something to, even though it was a dupe, something to make it my own. So I bought some wood fishing bobbers and brought my granddaughters, Jewel and Jesslyn, out to the lake for the weekend. And we painted and crafted and turned these into the hardware for our piece. I used slick stick on them from Dixie Bell because they were very slick from the previous painting on them. Then I put a coat of gravel road to have a deeper color underneath it and then I put a coat of the Mojave over it because I thought I would sand down and distress a little bit. It ended up that I just used some brown wax over that and we sanded the back edge flat so that it would be able to adhere to the uh, dresser with a little bit of wood glue and then we screwed it in from the back and I think it turned out really cute. I'll have a separate video on this with a little more detail uh, if you're interested. I wanted my stencil to have a little bit of texture, kind of like the piece that I'm duplicating. So I decided to use Dixie Mud for that. And it comes in white, brown, or black, but I actually wanted it to be more similar to the color of the piece slightly, but not stand out so much as a brown or a black would do. So I tinted it with the Mojave and the Umber that I'm using on the piece and just sort of mixed back and forth until I got a little bit of a muted color that I thought would look good with it. Since the drawers were in two sizes, the top drawer was a little bit smaller, I had Candy make me two different sizes of fish uh, to go on there, and I just taped those a little distance apart, sort of varying where the fish started and where the fish ended to just sort of look like they were swimming across the front. I made sure to take them to the sink, wash them, and dry them off between each layer. I really didn't want a chance messing it up and I thought that was the smartest thing for me to do. I used a good bit of tape. There was some flexibility to the 
stencils and I just did not want to chance the mud which was a little bit thin since I added the paint in to be um, running you know between the little lines there so I just used a lot of tape and I changed out the tape after each round as well because there was mud on it the whole time I gave the mud a couple of hours to dry and then I lightly sanded over it with the uh, Dixie Belle sanding pad to just make sure it was even to sort of rough up the surface because I'm going to wax next and to get off any areas where it, you know, went over a little bit or I had a little boo-boo there. And then I used the sponge side of it to kind of wipe any of the excess dust back off. The bottom drawer wasn't completely dry at this point, so I sort of left it, started my waxing, and then came back to it. Normally with the um, Dixie Belle brown wax or the other colored waxes, I would put a top coat or a base coat on first or a clear wax on first to help the wax to slide around a little bit. The Silk All-in-One has a top coat built in, but I knew I wanted to age it a little bit and darken it a little bit uh, around the edges and across the whole thing with the brown wax, so I decided not to do that, and I love the way it turned out. It was just the right amount. Had I wanted to erase any of it, I still would have been able to come back with some of the clear wax and do that, but I just sort of did the fish first and then came back and almost with just a small amount almost like dry brushing put a, a coat of the wax all over the drawer and then rubbed it in I then put a light coat of the wax over the rest of the piece. There's a little bit of detail there above the uh, drawers. I put a little bit extra there and a little bit extra in each of the seams and things like that to give it that aged look. But everywhere else, I just lightly put it on there and wiped it off just to deepen the color just a tad.
best friend Didn't care about the rules, good on the weekends I'll be in fools, drift in the deep space So brave and so stupid, just like the movies How it's gonna stay in the I'm doing double duty here with the end of those uh, paint brushes. There was a little bit of mud from the uh, fish that went into the hardware holes and I pushed that in, but I also used that to pull my drawers out so that I could uh, paint and wax the tops. I used the same chip brush and brown wax and put a little wax on each of the bobbers for the hardware to sort of make them match the piece and age them a little bit. Then we sanded them down as I showed you earlier. And here I'm just adding a little bit of wood glue um, to hold them on and glue them down permanently because they will get pulled on when the drawers are used. But I'm also coming from the inside and screwing them on. But basically the what the screw does is hold it in place until the, the glue dries. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. We'll be back for another challenge. You know I love the challenges so much. Make sure and check out the playlist. There's 20 of us all together doing these. Click uh, the subscribe button, the notification button, and we'll be back every single week with a video and something fun to do, and I sure appreciate you being here. Bye. Ooh, I'm a mess. <laughs>